So, if Bonnet's dead, like he's seriously not the big bad of the of the season. Hey guys, it's Marsha, and welcome to Really Seriously For Real. Okay, I guess this is it. Oh, spoilers ahead, right? Um, yeah, Stephen Bonnet is no longer a problem, no longer an issue. He's out of here. We don't have to worry about him anymore. Um, but I mean, geez, did we really worry about him at all this season? But before we get too deep in, uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and click the bell because you know if you click the bell, then you'll always be notified when I upload a video. So let's talk about this episode. Everyone, they go into Wilmington. Well, I'm saying everyone, but it's uh, uh, it's Jamie, Claire, Brianna, Roger, and Ian, right? I don't think I'm forgetting anyone. But the men, they're gonna set up Bonnet, take care of him, boom, out of the picture. Brianna and Claire, they're like, hey, we're gonna do some errands and then we're gonna romp around the beach. However, Bonnet ended up finding or seeing them in Wilmington. And so he followed them, uh, incapacitated Claire, took Brianna, and you know, then was like, can we play house? <laughs> Let's raise Jimmy together. And then um, proceeds to ask Brianna if she could teach him how to be a gentleman. So she uses her wit to try to uh, stay several steps ahead of him which unfortunately she doesn't because uh, after a little bit of a test of a kiss, she fails and then that sends Bonnet into a rage and ultimately he tries to sell her to some guy and everyone ends up uh, getting there just in time to save her and Roger takes down Bonnet. There's a scuffle on the beach and um, yeah, they don't, end up offing him. Governor Tryon would be the best person to, to take him to so he can go through the justice system. So his death by drowning. At the end, Brianna ends up uh, shooting him, ending his life. Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna talk about just like a couple of key things, but I just wanted to give the, the rundown. That's basically what happened. Number one, if you are doing a sting, why are you all hanging out together in a tavern in the town that you know that the guy that you're trying to set up has been spotted. So I don't know that it really, it started, it really bothered me. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm kind of starting this episode off uh, as a negative because I think overall I actually liked the episode, but there were definitely some things that it's just like, mm, I'm not sure if I would have done it that way. All right, so now let's let's talk about Brianna and Bonnet. Their scenes together while she was, um, when she was taken by him, that was probably, that was some of the more, some of the most deep uh, scenes that I've seen on Outlander since probably Claire and Blackjack Randall. You have someone that is there with their captor. Someone who you fear. Someone that has already taken something precious from you. Someone who is without a doubt evil. And now you're sitting directly across from this person and it's just like, what do you do? You know, like, how do you, you, you're trying to go over every possibility in your head. You're looking at every exit. You're contemplating every move. There are obvious differences between Bonnet and Blackjack Randall. Blackjack Randall, I mean, I think it's probably safe to say that he's just pure evil. And then Bonnet, there's a line. There's a very thin line, but there's a line where you know that maybe if he just had a different life uh, or a different start to life, that things would have been a little different for him, you know, now, right? So I just found, I, I found that little dynamic very interesting because obviously we've seen plenty of scenes between Blackjack Randall and Claire where 
it's been a very uh, intimate, was it tete-a-tete -tete between the two where, you know, they're, they're both trying to be very cunning and it's just a, a game of chess. And it's just like, how do I either get the upper hand or keep the other, the upper hand? Now with Bonnet, there's clearly, there's something wrong with him, just a tad. Uh, and thankfully Brianna, she has a lot of wit and she was able to keep a level head. And obviously she was, she was scared, Bonnet. He's just like, you know, I want you to, to teach me how to be a, a gentleman. And, and I loved that scene. There was that point in Brianna's eye where she went from being scared and a little confused as, you know, to his request to all of a sudden, like that switch going off, like, you know, you know that she, the wheels were spinning and she's like, all right, you know what? If I just go along with this, maybe I can get out of this. With Bonnet, you're getting a lot of emotions, right? You're getting the craze, you're getting the fearful, you're getting the um, almost childlike emotion, you know? And I don't know, I mean, like, I think that kind of speaks to the actor. He did a fantastic job, I thought, um, because there was just a lot going on. Those scenes between both Bonnet and Brianna, very intimate. And a lot has to be done in order for it to continue to be interesting and for you to feel that there's still some stakes. You're not gonna like Bonnet. You're not gonna feel like this person can be a good person but you, cause like that ship kind of sailed, you know, he's, he's, you know, they've made sure throughout the show to show just how evil that, you know, just how evil he is. But if there is one thing, I would say that it's probably that you, you feel pity. Okay, so now there was an, another thing that I wanted to talk about and it's fate. Bonnet was talking a lot about fate that fate would bring the two of them together, him and Brianna together. Fate, 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 fate. And I found it really interesting how fate <laughs> was bringing a lot of things together. If I'm not mistaken, Galus would tell Claire, you know, that it was just, it was fate <laughs> that they keep running into each other uh, across time. And Galus was uh, another one, <laughs> one of those evil, <laughs> questionable uh questionable people brianna she she had her own version of this so i just thought it was really interesting that he would use the word fate after she fails the kiss test and uh he tries to sell her off to someone and um but then she is saved uh by her family and uh, brianna she decides that um you know we want the justice system to bring him to justice. And so, you know, it's funny, cause it's like, I thought that the whole purpose of them doing the whole sting operation and, and doing everything was so that way they can get rid of Bonnet, you know, be done with him once, once and for all. Like, I thought we decided that, like we were just gonna take care of him. And now all of a sudden it's like, oh, let's, <laughs> let's let the justice system do it. And then me personally, I'm like, um, the justice system hasn't been working out very well when it comes to Bonnet because the first time he was about to hang, uh, Jamie was able to help him escape. And then the second time when he was uh, in, in the jail cell, the explosion, he was able to get away. So I would not be trusting it to the, to the justice system. Governor Tryon or not, they're like, oh, we'll just let Governor Tryon, you know, you know he owes us, so. Uh, he can do it. The time it would take for them to get word to try on to, to help out. Cause I mean, like he's somewhere else and I don't know, you know what I mean? Now, listen, I'm not saying that anyone should inflict any harm on anyone, but I mean, like, I thought it was already decided that we want to take care of Bonnet. So Joe Casta, can we talk about this? You know, for Forbes to show his hand like that, I just thought it was so out of character. Now we don't, it's not like, like we the viewer, it's not like we've kind of 
got a lot of history or background on this guy. And obviously they've, they've given us some touches that he's not uh, a likable person at all and that he is definitely all about the riches, um, certainly. And he is also not one to worry about getting his hands dirty and messing around with um, um, you know, the lowly folks such as Bonnet. So I get that, I understand, but I just thought it was just so weird for him to just go all rage out and try to kill Jocasta right there in her home, right there in her parlor. All those people. I mean, whatever. I mean, obviously when you have people that are just that, you know, crazed and, and money hungry and just feeling very entitled, <laughs> then yeah, I guess, I guess you just, you know, you just blank out, blank out. You just blank out and rage out. But I don't know, I just, I just felt like it was just so like, what just happened? How did he just, I mean, like talk about zero to 60. But yeah, it was funny as all hell. The fact that um, he's sitting there, he's like, wait a minute, you gonna do what? With your money? What? How much? Who? <laughs> to me, it almost felt like Jocasta was messing with him, like the whole time. I mean, sure, I'm sure she was being very serious <laughs> about it, but it just, it, it, it felt like she was really just like throwing it in his face. Um, the fact that she was giving away all this money, but obviously things took a, took a turn. So that's certainly not something that she had banked on. At the end, when Bonnet is tied to the post, for me, it was definitely, you know that this is an evil man, but at the same time, you know that this, is, this was a troubled man. And it's like, you wanna hate him so much. And I know for me, I was really conflicted because even, you know, it's like, immediately you think like, oh my God, that was his, that was his fear. And here you are, you're, you're living the nightmare that you, that you've had all your life. It was giving me that, that sinking feeling in my stomach. It was hard, very hard to watch. Um, I knew that Brianna was probably going to shoot him. Um, and it's, it's interesting too, like after the fact, I was like, huh, when you think about it, they've been um, queuing this up from day one, uh, talking about the fact that she's such a good shot and everything with her is, you know, taking that shot, being a good marksman and all this stuff. And then here it is, seeing Bonnet look over to the shoreline and um, obviously seeing her, even though we don't see it. And I like that. I like that they only just showed us uh, his face. And it was like at that point or before that, he was panicky, he knew he was gonna die and it was gonna be a horrible, horrible death. And, uh, and then seeing her and it was like the calm kind of went over him. And obviously he knew that that was gonna be the end, but at least, you know, there wouldn't be any suffering. And so then that was like, again, you know, all the crap that he put Brianna through and yet still twice, twice he was given a gift. First at the jail and then here. And I loved that right after it happened and after we see it happen, then it, it goes to the shoreline and you see Brianna and the, you know, the barrel of gun, right? And you see uh, Brianna and she hands it over to Roger. That was the most powerful, unmistakable, take back your life stance <laughs> that I've seen in a long time. So I kind of feel like there wasn't tons that was going on in this episode, but it was good. I thought it was, I thought it was good, but I also thought that they could have done a little bit more with it. So if Bonnet's dead, Like he's seriously not the big bad of the of the season? Cause I thought that he was the big bad of the season. I thought like he was the one that we were gonna have to be dealing with him right up until the end. And so I'm a little confused here because 
He gone. So who else is there? As a bad guy, I kind of feel a little let down. Um, because ultimately, he really wasn't much of anything. I mean, okay, yes, definitely, you know, in the previous season, uh, he made his presence known, yes. But this season, I mean, I thought it would be a, a you know, a, a bit of a continuation. Um, and, and I don't know, it just felt like it was a little lackluster. All right, so that's it, except for the fact that I wanna know what did you think of the episode? Did you think that uh, this was a fitting in to Bonnet? And also too, what did you think of that whole little twist there uh, or that, that switch flip from Forbes? What did you think of that? Let me know, comment down below. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Until next time, bye.